Hi guys, I'm Samson, and Chance today is going to be demonstrating our drills for foundational training number two. If you'd like to download these drills, make sure you follow the link down below, and you'll be directed to the page that you can download these drills. Thanks for watching. Make sure you watch the whole video. That way you can get the tips along the way. Check out these next six drills. So our first drill is going to be forehand warm-up. You're just going to get in position and loop these balls cross court to your opponent's forehand. Excellent. So if you want to look at drill number one, all you have to do is hit the edit that brings up the drill here and you can kind of dissect and see how the drill was created. Okay, so it's, it has a cluster of balls. It's got random shuffle placement and scatter turned on so that balls go randomly anywhere in that zone. Okay? So on those first ones, Coach Chance put looping the balls directly to the forehand. Now we're going to work a little bit more on ball placement and adjustability. So he's going to loop the first ball deep to the middle and then the second ball wide to either side. Next one deep to the middle and then next one wide to either side. His primary focus is going to be adjusting to the incoming ball. His second focus is going to be where to hit to. Excellent. And these two elements consist of what is primarily encompassed with all rallies. The ability to adjust to the incoming ball and the ability to hit to where you want to. Okay. If we just set up a drill that the ball hit just one location here and chance hits there and there and there and there, that's fine for working on ball placement, but it's not game-like because he doesn't have to adjust. If we work on a drill that he's jumping all over the place, Foundationally, it's good to develop good basics, but if he's hitting the ball right here, even though he might play like the best player in the state of Ohio, if he hits every ball here, everybody's going to play good against him. So he has to have the ability to adjust and hit to different locations. Backhand warm-up. Um, it's going to give balls anywhere in the backhand side, and he's going to play all the balls deep here to the corner. I want him to count to see how many he makes and how many he misses. And depending on how he does, um, we're going to adjust the practice accordingly. So he's going to get 20 balls right there. Let's see how many he can make out of 20. It would help if I selected drill number two. <laughs> okay, selecting drill number two. Let's go. Here we go. <laughs> One for one, two for two, three for three, four for four, five for five, six for six, seven for seven, eight for eight, nine for nine, 10 for 10, 11, 11, 12 for 12, 13 for 13, 14 for 14, 15 for 15, 16 for 16, 17 for 17, 18 for 18, 19 for 19, and 20 for 20. Now, I was, mo <laughs> good job. I was most impressed with the surprise balls that came in here that his technique was adjustable. This is an important part of practice. Now, when you first do drills like this, it might feel like, oh, I'm less consistent. But the benefit for drills like this is way better because now your mind is involved. And that's really what you want, is you want to be actively involved while you're playing with the robot, adjusting, as opposed to turning off your mind and just banging the ball into the robot. Okay, so now that he was consistent, we're going to work on a little bit more challenging drill. He's going to adjust the same exact way, except he's going to hit one ball here, one ball wide. One ball here, one ball wide. Now, how wide should he go? Well, it kind of depends on where the ball is at on his side. It also depends on his comfort level. So if he's a little bit jammed or run wide here or here, and he's not that comfortable, he'll probably play kind of deep to the corner. If he's in the really ideal position, especially from there, he's going to target really wide. Okay, so we're going to go here, 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 here. 
He's still focusing on the adjustment from his end, and he's also working on ball placement at the same time. Middle, wide, middle, wide, middle, wide, middle. Huh. <laughs> okay, let's do it again. Here we go. All right. Okay. Um, nope, that's forehand warm up. Okay, here we go. Backhand warm up. Same one again. Excellent, excellent. So Chance is quite skilled at being able to adjust as well as hit to the location that he wants to. That's why he should do that. Now, let's say, for example, you do this drill at home and you're able to hit, let's say, 10 out of 20 here. Okay? Keep targeting here. We don't want to go with a lower percentage because we're trying to hit very, very extreme placement. But after you're at 80%, 85%, and you're able to hit here, now be able to vary it a little bit. The best tactics in the world as far as where to place the ball strategically won't do you any good if your percentage is quite low. So in the beginning, we're working on high percentage deep to the corner. Once you're consistent, then we're going to work on our placement. So we've got three, I mean, so we've got six drills total for this one. We are now on to drill number three. Drill number three, I just select the drill here. And then if you want to see what it is, you can just hit edit. And you can see it's short no spin and then one backhand, one forehand. So a short nose spin serve to the middle, and then one backhand, one forehand, and then a break. How do we know that there's a break programmed? Because you see where it says S1? That means it's indicating that there's a serve. So naturally, when there's a serve, it gives you a break after the last ball. Okay? So short nose spin to the middle, and then backhand, forehand. Here we go. Okay, now one question that people ask is, how can I make sure that my drill is very game-like? From this ball to this ball, it feels like game timing, and then there's some kind of an unnatural pause, and then the ball is there. Would that be game-like? Well, it really depends on where your opponent is. Okay? So let's say, for example, he flipped the ball, and I played fast to his backhand. That's normal timing. And then if I backed up, let's say I was a little bit surprised, and I played slower to the forehand from off the table, you would naturally have a little bit more time. But for this drill, I want to picture that the guy's right here, plays flip, and I play fast, and then there, and then there. So what am I going to do to make it a little bit more game-like? I'm going to show you how to edit the drill. So directly after ball two, we're going to hit ball two, we're going to hit plus 20%. What does that mean? Between ball two and three, we're going to have less time. So it's going to be two and then three, very, very fast. We're going to see if this drill look, feels a little bit more game-like. Short nose spin to the middle, and then backhand forehand. Excellent. That looks good. All right. Now, you can flip this serve anywhere you want now. And we're going to work on playing your backhand down the line and then your forehand down the line. Okay, so flip goes anywhere, backhand down the line, and then forehand down the line. Here we go. Same drill, but very specific ball placement. Excellent. That's one of my favorite drills on basic training two. Now the next one is going to be, we're actually going to do the same drill one last time, but I'm going to show you how to make it more advanced. So we talked earlier about 
percentages. You really need to be at least 80 to 85 percent on. So if Coach Chance does this drill, and let's say he does 100 balls, and he makes 92 out of 100, it's time to challenge himself to do something harder. What could he do? He could go wider, he could go faster, he could be more precise on his location, or he can challenge himself by randomizing it. If he's in the 60, 65%, 70% range, it's not good enough. He needs to continue with the same one. So we're going to randomize the same exact one. So it's going to be a short no-spin serve anywhere. Go ahead and flip. And then it will be a top spin anywhere and then another top spin anywhere. So I want you to see, even within the same drill, how you can randomize it. So all you're going to do is hit shuffle placement. Remember, that keeps the order of the balls, but randomizes the location. Here we go. Same drill, but random now. Excellent. Now, the main thing that Coach Chance does well is since he doesn't know where the ball's at, he really focuses on keeping his hand in front. If the hand is in front, then the body can respond. Naturally, a lot of people want to take their hand back, and they get, they're fine if the ball goes to that zone, but if they get tricked, they run into problems. So I want you to watch this one one more time, and I want you to see that after he flips, then he really keeps his hand in front, and he's adjustable. This is one of the most important foundational things you can do. Flip, and then he keeps that hand in front. In front and in front. As the hand is in front, it's also easier to move because you're more balanced. You can notice that no matter if the ball goes to the middle, to the wide backhand, or to the wide forehand, he's trying to make small steps for each of them. Excellent, 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 excellent. Good. All right. Drill number four is our most challenging drill of this entire series. Do you need a water break? Are you okay? You sure? Okay. So it's going to give a no spin serve short anywhere and then six random top spin balls anywhere and then a break. Now you might ask, why is that random? Well, if you want to dissect a drill, all you have to do is hit edit down here and you can see what the drill consists of. So if we unclick shuffle placement, it would hit first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. But Coach Chance is good enough that we're going to just hit shuffle placement. That way it's random from the very get-go. Here we go. Short no spin and then six random. Two, three, four, five, six. And then a little pause. One. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then a little pause. Now, why are, why are these types of drills sometimes more valuable than continuous? Because you can feel more that you're playing a game. In a game, when do you have 250 random topspin balls and the rally keeps going, 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 right? It doesn't. So to really be able to simulate a game is really the goal for almost any robot user. So you get a short serve, a short side spin or a short no spin, you flip, you get a series of balls and then a short pause. Okay? So that's the reason that I personally feel like drills like this are actually more valuable than continuous random. Last time, one more time, here we go. Excellent. Short no spin serve, and then six random top spin. One, two, three, four, five, six. Excellent. All right, one other thing that I need to mention on this is if you want to make it easier, one way to do it is just grab the cluster of balls and bring them a little bit more inside. If you want to make it more challenging, you can widen it by making it wider outside. Also, like we talked about, you can adjust balls per minute. Sometimes when I want to just focus, let's just say on my forehand, for example, I'll move this ball over here and I'll bring the whole cluster of balls there. Then what do you get? Then you get a short no-spin serve anywhere here 
and then you get a series of topspin balls here. So sometimes I'll just want to focus on one side instead of full table random. So feel free and to, to be flexible as far as adjusting any of these drills. To adjust any of the drills, all you have to do here is just hit edit, and then you can go and change any of them. Then make sure you hit the save button so you don't have to edit it the next time. Next one is one of my favorite drills. It's going to give a deep backspin ball deep to the forehand, followed by two topspin balls. So it's going to be a deep backspin ball here, followed by a topspin, and then another topspin deep to the forehand, followed by a little break. Backspin, and then topspin, and then topspin. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. That's a great demonstration by chance. You can see that he's waiting on the backspin and then looping, and then he's really focused on hitting the topspin in front. Now, using this drill, I want to emphasize one really important principle, and that is being able to change the speed of your hit. You see, some people, when they play with a robot and the ball is coming at the same speed, they themselves become a robot by hitting the same speed, same speed, same speed. So it's going to give him now a backspin serve to the forehand. He's going to loop, and then it's going to be a topspin ball. He's going to play like slow loop, and then he's going to play a faster loop on the third ball. So even though the second and third ball are coming out similarly, he's going to work on changing his own speed. Okay, so it's backspin, and then topspin, topspin but I want you to see how he hits a driving loop on that third one. Backspin, topspin, and goes. Yes. More weight transfer on that third ball. Excellent. Yes. Very, very good. Now, uh, you can also take the same exact drill and you can hit mirror. And then what happens with mirror? It reverses it, so now it's going to the backhand. So this backspin serve has a little bit of side spin. It's going to be kind of curving in this zone, and then it's going to give him two balls there. So he does the backhand loop against backspin, and then two backhand loops against topspin. So same exact drill, but we mirrored it for backhand. Excellent. So that's one thing that I just need to continue to emphasize to you is that you can take one drill and you can keep adjusting it. For my practice session, if I practice for 45 minutes, I'll oftentimes only do like two drills in the 45 minutes, but I'll make adjustments like this. So maybe I'll take the same one and I'll have the serve go there and then maybe one topspin ball here or one topspin ball here. And then I'll work on maybe serve deep to my middle transition point and then one here, one here. So take a drill, make it harder or easier by just dragging those balls around and then also adjusting BPM here, which is balls per minute. Okay. Our final drill for this session is going to be a challenging one. It's with shuffle placement. It's deep backspin serve anywhere, followed up by two topspin balls anywhere. So all three of these balls are anywhere. So it's similar to the last drill, but it's completely random. Here we go. Final drill for this session. Good. I really like this demonstration. And one last comment that I need to make before we wrap up on this session. A lot of my online robot users, when they're not thinking about the location, they play way too many balls to the middle here. So we oftentimes will set up targets deep on the table to practice hitting deep. For this particular one, what I'm going to have Coach Chance do is I'm going to have him play every ball deep to the back end, except occasionally when he can hit a really, really strong shot, he's going to hit deep to the forehand. So he's not just knocking the ball up to the forehand when he's surprised, but he's intentional about choosing to hit to the wide forehand. So what does he need to focus on? His own adjustability or where he's hitting to? Definitely his own adjustability. And he's going to play the ball safely here. And occasionally he's going to play deep to the forehand. 
but it's decisive. It's intentional when he changes deep to the forehand. Here we go. Excellent. Now, sometimes when a student starts adding too many factors, random here, backspin here, topspin here, I got to hit here, I got to hit here, it gets overwhelming. It, it, it truly does. So what do you do? If you get overwhelmed, simplify it and maybe make all three balls go to just the forehand. Or delete ball two and ball three and just work on just your opening loop with forehand or just your opening loop with backhand. Once you get the confidence back for that, then add all the other balls. Don't feel pressure from me that you have to make it this complicated all the time. It's just, if you're going to use these skills in games, you're going to have to be able to do it. I've worked with hundreds of people online with lessons, and a lot of people just work on one ball, one ball, one ball, and they'll just do that an hour a day, and they're scratching their head and sending me emails like, Samson, why isn't my backhand loop working in a match? And it's like, well, because we've isolated it. So in 17 stages of developing a skill, we're literally at stage two, okay? So as you're able to develop more things and link the shots together, you're gonna see more benefit in match play. Thanks for watching.